Hey guys, welcome to This Messy Bun. My name is Barbie and today we're going to be making Italian style sloppy joes. These are so delicious and they're always a huge hit in the household here. We're basically taking those flavors of an old sloppy joe and turning it into something a little more elevated, a little more fun, a little more funky, lots of flavor. And we're not going to be using a can today. We're going to be making our own sauce. It's going to be so easy. I promise you guys are going to love it. Okay, so I have the oven preheating at 350 degrees. This is an Italian style loaf bread that I got from the store. So we're going to go ahead and try to cut this in half as evenly as possible. I apparently did not um, learn how to cut, draw, or do anything in a straight line when I was a kid. So hopefully this won't be too horrible. Yeah, looks great. Awesome. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Doesn't really fit in the pan. Okay, we're just gonna do one at a time baking then. It's fine, it'll work out. It's totally fine. It's totally fine, guys. It was all part of the baking. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I went ahead and mm, probably about three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna use olive oil instead of butter today. You can certainly use butter if you want to. You can even do a little bit of both. Um, I also have three cloves of garlic and a generous, generous helping of parsley. So we're gonna go ahead and the parsley is probably also about three tablespoons, I would imagine. Honestly, guys, I am really bad about measuring. I'm going to try my best for you guys. <laughs> Make sure I'm writing stuff down and kind of guesstimating. So a lot of this stuff, you really can just figure out what your family likes, what you like. A little more, a little less. It's really cool. I also don't really care for this brush. That's awesome. I also put pepper in here. Pepper just really elevates it. Like you're at a restaurant. You know how they give you that like fancy oil and pepper and things at the table? Yeah, that's awesome. So good. We also got a sleeping puppy below you that's having a dream. Oh, is she? Oh, she's oh. dreaming. Kicking those paws. Hopefully she doesn't trip me. That would suck. French bread you could also use is not as thick as this. Um, so it would probably stretch better, but that looks pretty good to me. Awesome. Okay, so like I said, 350 degree oven for eight minutes. Set a timer so we don't burn. I'm using mild Italian sausage today. You can certainly use a spicy Italian sausage if you wanted to, or even ground beef or ground turkey. Um, but for today, we're going to go ahead and do it this way. Okay, so I've got this pan already on, about medium, medium high with a little bit of olive oil, just a drizzle. Um, we're going to let that continue to get a little bit hotter, and then we're going to go ahead and get the meat put in there. I went ahead and cut up about half of a, not about, a half of a bell pepper, green. Also half of a yellow onion, three cloves of garlic, and probably about a cup, maybe a little bit more of mushrooms. I gave them kind of just a rough chop, so they're kind of like the same size and texture of the meat. Um, I also have some spinach, about two cups. This is going to go in at the very end, and so we'll do that last. Looks like a lot, but it really isn't because once it hits the pan with the sauce and everything, it's just going to completely break down. This recipe is super versatile. I mean, if you don't like mushrooms, don't put it in there. Which my daughter, her, there has to be mushrooms, but we're doing it. We're doing it, Kayla. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add in. There we go. Nice little sugar. Get this meat kind of chopped and working a little. The bread's almost done. Looks like it only has about a minute left. And then we're going to broil it. Make sure you watch it under the boiler because it will burn very quickly. But we're just going to try to get the brown all nice and like bubbly, bubbly and crusty and brown and yummy. I don't have too much bubbly since there's not cheese. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Okay. So while that's going, I like to have a bottle of red wine around. Cabernet or Merlot is my favorite. Can't really do the other red wines because they're too steep. So go ahead and get this open. The wine I chose to pair with today's meal is a 2017 Cabernet from Bogle Vineyards. The American oak and black pepper really enhance the cherry and fruit notes while leaving a subtle sweet taste on the palate. It was also the American Winery of the Year, awarded by wine enthusiasts in 2019. You can find this bottle 
in any grocery store for less than $10. You can also find it online on marketplaces such as wine.com. So we're going to go ahead and um, put this on boil now, and I'm going to set a timer for two minutes to start and go up from there if we need to. Okay, that looks pretty good, so I'm actually going to go ahead and add my vegetables now. So again, half a bell pepper, half of an onion, three cloves of garlic, about a cup or so of mushrooms. Oh, it smells so good already. Anytime onion and garlic hit the pan, it just is like a party already. So I'm gonna use this nifty little bottle opener. Honestly, you guys don't want to spend five minutes watching me try to open the one. And I'm not really sure how to get this thing out other than to do that, so that's what I do. Sorry, the makers of it if I'm doing it wrong. All right. Cabernet is definitely my favorite wine. Merlot is right up there with it. So this is going to be a nice pairing with this kind of Italian style meal that we're making. All right, so let's get back to the meat. It really does smell so good. Oh my gosh, guys. This is close to being ready. Just kind of wanted to get brown. I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit higher. Once all the pink is gone, then we're going to go ahead and start with our sauce. Which I know you guys are thinking, ugh, the sauce, why can't I just use a can? Like, what's it there for? But trust me, this is so much better. Okay, let's check our bread. <laughs> see, I told you, like, Cabernet. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Should I? Excuse me. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Mmm, sister? Look good? Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the oven off because we're not going to need that again. This is going to be an open face sandwich. So the size of this bread is really going to work because, I mean, you really don't want it to be a super huge piece of bread. I mean, you can have it bigger, make it more like a sandwich and bite into it if you want to. That's totally workable. All right. This looks pretty amazing. Okay, so let's start our sauce. First, what I'm going to do... Oh, How'd you get out of there, little friend? Get back. I'm gonna go ahead and do a tablespoon of tomato paste. I like to do table paste, table paste, <laughs> tomato paste in one of these cute little squeezable containers because it's good for storage, right? You just use what you need and put in the refrigerator. The cans, I mean, it's just gonna go to waste. So, I mean, certainly you can do the can if you can't find something like this, but. Okay, so can, can you do the can can? Can can, a tablespoon of this. Maybe a little bit more. Go ahead and kind of blend that up a little bit. Next, we're going to go ahead and do ketchup. This is two thirds of a cup of ketchup. Which seems like a lot, but really isn't because you're going to want a nice, hearty, thick sauce. Something that really sit well on the bread. Okay. To that, I'm going to go ahead and do some mustard here. Probably about a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Brown sugar. And I did light brown sugar. I guess you could do dark if you wanted to, but light probably would be best. A little pinch of chili powder flake. Crushed red pepper flake. Not chili powder flake. Crushed red pepper flake. This is chili powder. So we'll do that. And then some water here, just a little splash. Be sure to click the link at the bottom of this video and um, where you can go directly to my blog and get the full recipe as far as measurements and whatever else you need there. All right, so we're gonna get this working. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. I really like these salt and pepper grinders. Honestly, it's hard for me to when I have to measure out specific um, amounts of salt and pepper because I just want to like crack it. And it's hard to do trying to crack salt and pepper onto a spoon, so it doesn't work. 
Crack it. Crack it. Whip Twist it. it. Pop it. I'm going to go ahead and do a dash of uh, red wine vinegar and some Worcestershire Shire, Worcestershire sauce. Don't know. I don't know how to say it, guys. I'm sorry. Do my best here. Oh, she moved. Yeah, I can move around now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so let's get this going. I'm going to turn my heat down to about low now. Let this simmer for a few minutes. Probably about five, five to ten minutes. Just kind of let things get all happy in there and gel together. Yeah, that looks amazing. Once this cooks down for about five minutes or so, this one will add the spinach. So once we get this all put together, I'm so excited. It already smells amazing. It looks so good. I'm going to put a little dollop of ricotta that I put a little bit of salt and pepper in as well. And then we're going to garnish this with some parsley that I reserved from this beautiful creation. I mean, come on, it just looks so good. Oh, it smells amazing. I'm so excited. I might be salivating a little bit. It's fine. Okay, do a little bit of a wine break. Mmm. Yeah, so good. A lot of times Merlot and Cabernet is going to be a little on the dry side. I know it's weird. You're like, it's liquid, it's wet. How is it dry? It just is. But with this one, you do get kind of a sweetness, but not overpowering, which I really like. Because again, not a big sweet pan. Why am I playing with a napkin? Okay, this has been going for about three minutes. And honestly, I kind of like it. I think this is about where we want to be. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe another minute on it and then we're gonna pull it. But you can see the mushrooms is cooked down, the bell pepper, the onion. You don't want anything to be raw by any means. And that's why when I was halfway through cooking the meat, I went ahead and added those ingredients. Oh, the, you know what I mean? Spinach! Guys, come on. Where's my brains? Okay. Spinach, getting our vegetables. So this is gonna take about a minute or so to cook down with the spinach. Then we'll be ready to plate. So excited. Let's go ahead and cut our bread. Pretty good size. Oh, do you hear that? Hear that crunch? Yeah. That sounds amazing. Excuse me, bread. Look how perfect that is. Nice and crunchy on the outside. Everything is cooked well through, a little browned, but you still get that kind of interior where it's soft. So you are gonna get a perfect bite. Tons of texture with this bread alone. Not to mention everything else we're adding to it. Okay, the spinach is almost done. Working here, work it, own it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, perfect. So this spinach is melted down, not melted, cooked down. <laughs> Hopefully it's not melted. Cooked down to where we want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my burner. And get over how gorgeous this bread is. So we're gonna get a nice kind of ladle of mixture here. Just kind of place that down in the bowl like so. Maybe do a little bit more. I'm gonna go this way with it because I think it looks pretty that way. What we're gonna do is go ahead and get our ricotta here. Again, just a little bit of salt and pepper just to kind of enhance the flavor there. And we're gonna do a nice little dollop on top. Yeah, that looks pretty. And for garnish, just a little bit of parsley over the top there. Beautiful. What do you guys think? Looks yummy. Looks good enough to eat. Should we have a bite? See how it tastes? All right, so I think we should go ahead and take a bite of this thing. Oh, it looks and smells so good. Try to get a little. Oh, do you hear that crunch? Come on. Amazing. All right. Kind of a little bit of everything. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> you have 
the bread. The texture is amazing. You get that garlic already in the olive oil. Oh, it's so good. Then you get the spiciness from the Italian sausage and the creaminess from the cheese and the freshness from the herbs. Oh my God, the acidity all comes through really truly is the perfect messy bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. job. So good. Thank you guys for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, share, all the things. I remember at the bottom of this video is gonna be the link for my blog, for my website where you can get all the ingredients that we use to make this amazing meal. Oh, so good. All right guys, see you next time. Bye.